ordinance, chapter 22 specifically, uh, and no decision right now is requested by the committee at this time. So we will have that as our first item. The second item will be the noise ordinance. Staff resource here will be City Attorney Matt McCarley and Assistant City, Matt, Assistant City Attorney Bob Hagman. Uh, the committee will, of course, receive public comment regarding the proposed noise ordinance, and staff will provide a brief overview. No decision at this particular time. Also, I just recommend it at this particular meeting. I do need to let you know those that are interested in this particular item because I've gotten some feedback that many of you feel like a decision will come this day or tomorrow or the next day. No, there is a process. That process will um, allow you, one, to have the first level of public comment here this day on this particular subject matter. Uh, thereafter, it still has to go before uh, the, the mayor and city council. It will probably end up going to a workshop. We sometimes hear information in our workshops to brief the mayor and council on so that if there are any other questions outstanding, if you will, that, that, might, that might be out there from the mayor or even the, even the council. The committee, the community safety committee that you see around this table today, will have an opportunity to come back and to address those issues accordingly. Then beyond that, it will at some point show up on the mayor and city council agenda. It will be at the city council meeting where again there will be another opportunity for public comment and for input if you so desire to give it. And from there, uh, we will hear those comments and look to move forward in terms of making the decision as it relates to this particular item as we do on many other issues. Members of the committee, did I get that right? Okay with that? All right. That's it. Let's go ahead and proceed with item number one. I would like to make one comment before the public comments start. Please. My office has heard from everybody in the community who opposed the initial suggestion for a 400 foot spacing room on our bars and nightclubs uh, provision. We are convinced that they're right. Um, I would tell you that our office and Mr. Campbell no longer support that as an appropriate way to do this. We figured out that that, that swept up uh, way too many establishments that were not a problem. Right. And we're trying to, to come up with a much more targeted approach now that would basically be a chronic noise reducing <coughs> trigger. So that if you're not causing anybody a problem, you're not on our radar. If you are causing a problem, then we use the same kind of process as we use with minimum housing or any other inspection process to go investigate, and figure out what the problem is, see if we can reach some voluntary compliance, and if not, then start a plan and enforcement. We're ready to bring you that proposal the next time you meet after hearing comments today. But to clarify for the committee, we no longer support the original proposal of a 400 foot space. I simply don't think that works. Well, let me, one, uh, commend you and staff for going back and coming up with uh, some other alternatives uh, that can be properly embraced, as well as enforced. Largely in part because I quite frankly just think that that's me. Uh, for several reasons, and we will get into all of that today. <clears throat> but for those of you here represented now, hearing that perspective and getting that label of land, and sort of now really begin to preface your comments, <laughs> probably in shorter than two minutes, <laughs> around what it is that you'd like to say. Uh, and, and so it's with that that we'll go ahead and uh, allow the public comment. But prior to that, I do have Councilwoman Kinsley. Thank you. Oh, I just wanted to feedback on something you said because a lot of yes. the comments that I've received have been very constructive mm -hmm. and, and, and has helped, I think, lead us to where we are now. And that is just, that's very helpful. And I, I, I appreciate that. I really appreciate what our attorneys have done. I've worked with, well, when I say I've worked with them, I've really just gone to meetings with them, to go to and, and, um, and I know what, what, they, what they've been doing, I appreciate it. But your constructive comments have been very helpful, and I, I do appreciate them very much. Reiterating what the rules are and where we are. For everybody, this is your first time attending a public meeting here. 
where we are, and I think it goes, I think you need to say it, is that this is a committee. The committee's purpose in city council is to look closely at issues and to receive constructive feedback. The chairman and our procedures traditionally, we don't seek public comment at this time. So this is the committee and it remains in the committee and on the top of our agenda it says no decision will be made today. So there won't be a decision made today. What you mentioned earlier, let you all know in this very same room, we will likely have this before the full council and the mayor in what's called a dinner format at 5 o'clock. And at that point, the council may still decide it's not ready to go before the television and the full council. So we want everybody here to know that, that you don't need to leave this room believing that we're going to change and alter the way that Charlotte goes about the entertainment district and how the city is growing and turning this into a major, major issue. We're still in committee and I appreciate the, the attorney's office because they've been very responsive from this from the moment that we heard from the town. How long ago was Mac that we began talking about this issue? Been on it over a year or so. Been on it over a year or so. We've, we've still got a long way to go. I, I, I would say we're maybe at halftime right now, possibly. In a football analogy, maybe not even at the end of the first quarter. But we're getting there. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Gatorade then. <laughs> well, I think the one thing that has been realized through, through all the feedback received is that um, when you have something that may be a problem, where it's not the whole versus just a few. We called you to go back and reconsider some things that are more appropriate. And I think that's where we're headed, mm -hmm. and it's my hope that that's where we'll end up. First speaker, Phil Rossi, or Rosie, the <coughs> same Charlotte music. Thank you very much. Um, it's well, Rossi, like Rossi, Rossi. Did Rossi. Gotcha. Uh, appreciate your time, appreciate you, uh, your concern, and uh, all the energy everyone has put on to this effort, including the city attorney's office has been very helpful with us, providing us information in a timely fashion. I'd like to acknowledge and honor that, thank you. Uh, also, I'd like to acknowledge and honor all the time that people have put in uh, since the meeting on February 16th. Um, and, and I intend to take my full two minutes, uh, because I specifically put a lot of time and energy into this. We had a light schedule at the Neighbors Theater, I'm the bar manager there. Uh, I live in Chantilly. I frequent uh, many entertainment districts. I'm not, I didn't know there was just one, but I go to uh, Plaza Midwood, uh, Elizabeth, Noda, South End. Uh, you can find me in Uptown sometimes, and also uh, Billworth area. So I just want to kind of overview, give you guys a quick overview um, of what I submitted earlier today via email and what I submitted a hard copy before you. This will be up on our Facebook site later. Um, there's been a, a lot of really Solid people that have volunteered a lot of time and energy that represent a uh, vast constituency uh, in this community from business owners that might own more and more businesses, uh, music supporters, um, uh, people that provide clerical assistance. Uh, you know, there's just a vast array of demographics that make up the information that we've submitted. And I just kind of wanted to go over a couple things. Um, what, what we're most concerned about, what motivated most of us to, to take a lot of effort outside of our very busy schedules and make time, not take time, but we had to make time to put into this solution, was one, we felt like that the powers that be were missing a lot of what we see as obvious uh, existing solutions in other markets uh, that are similar to ours. For example, Raleigh, North Carolina, Austin, Texas. You name it, it's out there. There's no point in reinventing the wheel. We were not interested in wasting our time in reinventing the wheel. But we did look very critically at some of the solutions out there and you know, thought that, that we would bring those, those options to light. One of those being that you know, the city could miss, a, a, in addition to if they were to, to continue down this path, which apparently are not applied your efforts at you got to get you to wrap up, Mr. Ross. Sorry? You've got to get you to wrap up in two minutes. Okay. Or, uh, great. Well, there's a lot of great <laughs> ways that uh, this could actually lead to economic development for the city in terms of a potential permanent fee, uh, great hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, that would take care of a lot of other things. Also, introducing business owners having to buy it. And so that's a pretty good wrap up. Hey, you got it. Thank you. 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 Thank you again so much. Uh, Jared, you're... Welcome, Jared. Thank, thank you, sir. Uh, excuse the uh, 
business casual cause oriented, had to come straight from, or had to leave work early for this. Uh, I'm not a business owner, I'm not a musician, I'm here representing the fans, the people who don't have a whole lot of financial stake in the whole thing, but <coughs> still need a voice to be heard. Um, I do a lot of activity in the community uh, and organize uh, numerous charity events to raise money for cystic fibrosis, school programs, humane society, uh, and the cause that's nearest and dearest to my heart, uh, domestic violence here in Charlotte. Uh, the one thing that we've always been able to rely upon has been the music community to donate their time for indoor and outdoor events. Uh, personally, I've been involved in raising over $150,000 for domestic violence over the last five to four years here in Charlotte. And the music community has always embraced us. And it's one of those things that with the ordinance passing as it were, we wouldn't be able to survive and it would affect a lot of uh, philanthropic events here in Charlotte. Uh, it's also one of those things that the music creates a relationship and it fosters young musicians who are coming up and coming up in the city. Uh, not everybody can get into the venues that are newly, newly coming up here in Charlotte. The stuff out at NC Music Factory and, and uh, you know, Uranus and Southland. Uh, a young musician needs to start just sitting somewhere with an amp and a guitar and being able to tell his story. And, th and this ordinance would, would squash that, that dream that that person might have. Um, so we have to come to a general understanding. Time is the easiest way to do this. You know, 400 feet, the lay of the land here at undulates and, and it's and carries in different ways throughout the city. Um, so the 400 feet, that restriction isn't necessarily a good, a good measuring stick. Nor is the decibel level because most of the places that you go in, in Charlotte exceed the current ordinances decibel level as it stands with just general traffic. So since we've all realized what it takes, like when mom pointed at the clock and said it was time for bed, we know when to shut the lights off. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Bill Black. Members of the committee, I'm the music director for the School of Rock here in Charlotte, North Carolina, and would really like to tie into where uh, Luke Jarrett was going with this. You know, what we like to do is have the ability to have these these kids have places to play, and right now, as it stands with the way you know a lot of the businesses operate, a lot of clubs. Outdoors is the primary venue for these children to play. And we have our, our show team kids, which are kids aged 10 to 17, that have played in Nodad, played uh, out South Park, and, you know, and have done different festivals to raise money for cystic fibrosis. We work for Rock and Cure. We're doing stuff with Ant for Cure. And this is this is vital for what we do, and it's vital for the music scene to continue to grow in the city. And uh, I'm going to keep it really short because I know a lot of people have to go, but I did want to add that. Thank you.